Now, what are the facts? The Jews, I call them Jews to you because they're known as Jews. I don't call them Jews. I refer to them as so-called Jews because I know what they are. If Jesus was a Jew, there isn't a Jew in the world today. And if those people are Jews, certainly our Lord and Savior was not one of them. And I can prove that. Now what happened? The Eastern European Jews, who form 92% of the world population of those people who call themselves Jews, were originally Khazars. They were a warlike tribe that lived deep in the heart of Asia. And they were so warlike that even the Asiatics drove them out of Asia into Eastern Europe. And to reduce this so you don't get too confused about the history of Eastern Europe, they set up this big Khazar kingdom, 800,000 square miles, only there was no Russia, there were no other countries, and the Khazar kingdom was the biggest country in all Europe. So big and so powerful that when the other monarchs wanted to go to war, the Khazars would loan them 40,000 soldiers. That's how big and powerful they were. Now, they were phallic worshippers. This is filthy. I don't want to go into the details of that now. It was their religion, the way it was the religion of many other pagans or barbarians elsewhere in the world. Now, the king became so disgusted with the degeneracy of his kingdom that he decided to adopt a so-called monotheistic faith, either Christianity, Islam, the Muslim faith, or what is known today as Judaism, really Talmudism. So, by spinning a top, he said, eeny, meeny, miny, mo," and he picked out so-called Judaism. And that became the state religion, and he sent down to uh, the uh, Talmudic schools of Tel Aviv and Surah, and brought up thousands of these rabbis with their teachings, and he opened up synagogues and schools in his kingdom of 800,000 people, 800,000 square miles, and maybe 10 to 20 million people, and they became what we call Jews. There wasn't one of them that ever had an ancestor that ever put a toe in the Holy Land, not alone in Old Testament history, but Back to time, the beginning of time. Not one of them. And yet they come to the Christians and they ask us to support their armed insurrection in Palestine by saying, well, you want to certainly help repatriate God's chosen people to their promised land, their ancestral homeland, Italy. We gave you one of our boys as your Lord and Savior. You now go to church on Sunday and kneel, and you worship a Jew, and we are Jews, well, they were pagan Khazars who were converted just the same as the Irish. And it's just as ridiculous to call them people of the Holy Land as it would be there are 54 million Chinese Muslims. 54 million. And Muhammad only died in 620 A.D., so... In that time, 54 million Chinese have accepted Islam as their religious belief. Now imagine in China, 2,000 miles away from Arabia, where the city of Mecca is located, where Muhammad was born. Imagine if the 54 million Chinese called themselves Arabs. Imagine why you say they're lunatic. Any man that believes that those 54 million Chinese or Arabs must be crazy. All they did was adopt as a religious faith a belief that had its origin in Mecca, in Arabia. The same as the Irish. When the Irish became Christians, nobody jumped them in the ocean and imported from the Holy Land a new crop of inhabitants that were Christians, that Christian flesh and blood, they weren't different people, 
They were the same people, but they had accepted Christianity as their religious faith. Now these pagans, these Asiatics, these turco Finns, they were a mongoloid race who were forced out of Asia into Eastern Europe. They likewise, because their king took the faith, the Talmudic faith, they had no choice. Just the same as in Spain. If the king was Catholic, everybody had to be a Catholic. If not, you had to get out of Spain. So everybody, they lived on the land, just like the trees and the bushes. A human being belonged to the land under that feudal system. So they all became what we call today Jews. Now imagine how silly it was for the Christians, for the great Christian countries of the world to say, we are going to use our power, our prestige to help repatriate God's chosen people to their ancestral homeland, their promised land. Now, could there be a bigger lie than that? Could there be a bigger lie than that? And because they control the newspapers, the magazines, the radio, the television, the book publishing business, they have the ministers in the pulpit, they have the politicians on the soapboxes talking the same language. So naturally, you believe black is white if you heard it often enough. You wouldn't call black black anymore. You'd start to call black white. And nobody could blame you. Now, that is one of the great lies that is the foundation of all the misery that has befallen the world.